Thank you. Hi, my name's Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Audi S4. Then I'll take you for riding it. But first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a three litre TFSI V6 S-Tronic Quattro. 2015 or 15 plate, two owners from new, great specification, 64,218 miles, fuel economy, urban, 20.9 miles per gallon, extra urban, 40.4 miles per gallon, combined is 30.1 miles per gallon, 0 to 60 time in listed, but I'll cut it into the video, top speed of 155 miles per hour, out of a 328 brake horsepower, six cylinder, 24 valve engine. Um, lovely day today, great driving up here in this car this morning, really, really enjoyed it. It's an absolute pleasure to drive. So, we've got the power folding door mirrors, it's de-chromed around the windows, the five spoke rotor style alloy wheels, they're finished in diamond cut finish with uh, dark silver metallic spokes. They look really lovely, good tyres all round. High pressure headlamp wash. Got the parking sensors in the front bumper. The all important S4 badge, low chin spoiler, big Audi grill. Um, let me see, round about there, it's, it's got uh, adaptive cruise control, distronic cruise control, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can basically set the distance from the car in front of you and it will maintain that distance. On the way up, somebody pulled out in front of me um, and it, it brake it, it break violently. So, uh, good system. Has these uh, sill extensions there, the rear privacy glass, remote boot release. That's just flipped up because there's a strong spring there. It's not kind of uh, motorised or anything. Plenty of room in the back. You've got these kind of carrier bag holders there so all the stuff doesn't spill in your boot. Rear parking sensors, the quad exhaust and uh, kind of a discreet built-in uh, rear boot spoiler. It feels like new in the back, <laughs> as, as they always say. I don't know why they, they bother making four-seater cars anymore. Um, nobody seems to sit in them. But anyway, it's, it's beautiful. I think it's Milano leather, could be wrong. The seats are nice and well padded. These are sculpted, so there's cutouts. Kind of give the, the rear passenger more room. Um, very, very nice. It's got the rear child seat. Isofix anchor points. We've also got here rear armrest, and I think that, yeah, that's like a, a ski bag. There's a big plastic bag that folds all the way through here. Or your curtain rods from IKEA or whatever it is you're going to buy. Put them straight down the middle. I am, um, <laughs> what, one of the things I've noticed this morning is after a certain amount of time that this car locks itself. And it locks itself whether there's a key inside or not. So I'm really, really glad I decided to split the keys up and put the spare one in my pocket. Otherwise, I'd have, I'd have been sat there waiting for John to come and get me. But uh, nice car, lots of headroom, a couple of uh, reading lights here. Um, as I say, on the, on the way up here this morning, the slip road onto the uh, M6, I was behind a motorbike. The motorbike is, is like leaning over like so, going around, you know, the centrifugal force, uh, taking him around and, and leaning over. And, and I was just flat, just, just straight round. It accelerates so smoothly and so fast that the suspension doesn't seem to be too bad, too bumpy. You know, usually with sports car or high performance cars, you, you get that awful bumpiness, which I don't like, but this, it really, really is nice on, on, on all roads. It has both speakers too. Um, so I, I, I had the, uh, the stereo blasting out on the way up here. 
it's a, it's a beautiful car. Great to drive. Somebody left a comment in uh, on one of my videos the other day, and it was an Audi TT video, and they, they said it, you know, it, it beats Porsche and Mercedes Benz, and I, I got to thinking, and, and I think it probably does. The, the Audi TT, the the, the Quattro version especially, um, fantastically underrated car, I think. In my day, it was it was a called a hairdresser's car, but I I had a few, and and I'm no hairdresser. As you can as you can tell, but uh, yeah, I, I I really really enjoyed it, and I, and I know I'm going to enjoy driving this through the the country lanes, doing the rest of the video. So uh, um, with a bit of luck, I'll have a big smile on my face. Okay, I'll just take you for riding it. So there we go, that's the Audi key. Foot on the brake in the dashboard, press in. And there you go, glorious uh, sound from the engine. Let's just put the seat belt on. Just got the aircon on full blast at the moment. Oops. As I say, it's such a nice drive this morning in this. I mean, I normally drive a diesel car, and, I, and don't get me wrong, I, I like diesel, I like the economy, I like the fact that diesels are lubricant and diesel engines usually last longer, and certainly before they need reboring or rebuilding. But it is nice to get out in a nice petrol. Um, I, I prefer this type of ride now to, to a sports car. It's just trying to get my uh, seat comfortable. It has got two position memory seats. Blooming out, I forgot the service history again. I don't know. The older I get, the better I was. But, uh, I, I need to put a nice relaxing record on, otherwise I, I just want to open the taps all the time on this and and it's uh, although it's a great driving road it's not a good road for uh, speed with the wildlife I need to pull over in a bit because now there's a there's a pickup behind me and they don't seem to be too bothered about the speed and the wildlife. Great, great driving position. We've got the gear selector here that if I knock it over there, like so, I can change up and down with the selector. can move it into sport by just pulling back on the gear selector, pull back again in, in drive, sports. It, it, um, it doesn't come into it with, uh, even when I'm driving fast, that drives, drives quite adequate for me. lobbed all the rubbish out there. No doubt one of them that we're saving the planet for. Look at all rubbish on the road. Pizza boxes and scum. Absolute scum. I'm going to pull over in a bit as I say, let this, this pick up out. Car's got Bluetooth hands-free, Bluetooth audio streaming, sat-nav. I particularly like the setup of the pedals here, although you won't be able to see them, I don't think. Um, brake and accelerator quite close together. I can actually, um, not exactly heel and toe, but big toe and little toe, accelerate and brake. Uh, it does make it a lovely car to drive through bends like this. 
as I say, the, uh, the suspension is, I'd say, just about right. It really is good. This is a bumpy road, it's not too bad. But yeah, it's, it's absolutely lovely on the motorway. And just, just round here, the steering. Look at that. Oh, catches pigeons too. That's where you notice the petrol engine, just just going up hills like, like so. Diesels pull you up great. Petrols you fly up. It's the balance on it as well is. Just superb. Paddle shift, change down like so. folding door mirrors that here is your seats your electric memory seats the uh, you can actually have them switched off as well so you can't use the electric memories I, I can't I can't see how you would accidentally change that or perhaps reaching for the to adjust the door mirrors you could do it again another Audi seem to like wasting switches to switch the fan on you you have to click the fan switch and then turn one of these knobs I get that you can have individual sides to turn the fan on I suppose but it, uh, again it just seems like a waste of a, a switch to me I, I like this the flat bottom steering wheel, the S4 badges everywhere, the finish, the leather's lovely, it's got electric seats, it's got this phi support here which you can uh, pull out, or I'll show you on that one, so you can pull that out, push it back in, get right behind your knees, get the perfect driving position. Just whip round this corner. I think that was my glasses case just coming off the back seat. Bose speakers. I'll have to turn that record down otherwise I'll be doing 100 mile an hour along here in no time. electronic handbrake there that's your volume control and on off switch for the radio and also you change tracks and it, it was a while before I realized I mean it's clear enough there are actual signs uh, on the here uh, center console here to show you that you can change track or fast forward um, but you, you change tracks by just knocking that um, rotary control over or, or on a track and back a track by knocking it that way then you've got the Audi version the Audi version of a an eye control which again is pretty good you change over like so you've got the that's back in the center which one that one without looking so that's that's your car things vehicle settings vehicle settings 
central locking and so on. No, no need to know about that. In the end of the indicator, which you do need to know about, is the lane departure. Well, it's not just a warning, it actually turns you back into the lane. No doubt if you've watched any other of my videos, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I think about a device that turns you back into a situation you're trying to escape from. Of course, if in the emergency you've remembered to indicate that you're going to uh, avoid a cyclist coming off the, off the pavement, then uh, you've no problem, you can go over the, the lines, but if you don't, it tries to turn you back. And I, I really, try as I might, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't see why that was invented. What a beautiful car. Absolutely. I mean, this is a real driver's car. You don't have to drive it fast. It's, a, it's an everyday car, but it's a weekend car as well that you can just... Uh, this, this pickup's really getting on my nerves. <laughs> I'm just going to pull over here and let him go past. So I should have read the service history then as well. I'll pull up here and uh, read the service history. Okay, so. Here we go, service history. 18th of the 10th, 2016, at 13,286 miles. Edinburgh Audi, 11th of the 1st, 2018 at 24,700 miles, Edinburgh Audi, 16th of the 3rd, 2018, 25,000 miles, brake discs and pads all round, 17th of the 9th, 2018 at 31,704 miles, Whetstone Audi, 10th of the 9th, 2020 at 48,458 miles, Amersham Audi, 16th of the 9th, 2021, at 56,486 miles, Amersham Audi, and uh, we'll do it again. I think, let's just, if we go here and we go to car, then over to servicing, click on servicing, tire pressure, monitoring, oil level, service intervals, on to service intervals, it, next oil change in 1,400 miles or 36 days, next inspection, in 2,300 miles or 30 days. So we'll get that service before it goes out. And there you go, you've got, there's your media, radio, telephone, and nav. There's your nav. All right, we'll get going again. The sound of the engine is so quiet and, and the gear changes are almost imperceptible. It's so good. <coughs> the display on the dash there, you see there on the left hand side is the rev counter, the far left is your temperature gauge in the center, is your information display, then your speedo, and then your fuel gauge on the right, your information display, it's showing there that I need some fuel. Um, the digital speedo is the most important for me though. It's showing average miles per hour, the mileometer, what gear you're in, how far you've driven, and then the outside air temperature. The 
so I'm, I'm not quite sure why there's a flat bottom on the steering wheel. I like it. I, I, I don't know why I like it. Um, because it, you know, I suppose it, in certain positions it gives you more leg room. But then as soon as you turn the steering wheel, if you're going around the corner, then that takes it away. I'm sure there's a reason for it. One of uh, one of my subscribers, always gone on about the burger van up here. They, they serve fantastic burgers, fantastic sausage and egg sandwiches, and uh, I can't resist going. When, when it's the, my mouth's watering now, I can't resist going. I think it's called the Langdon. I don't know Langdon Burger Van or something like that. Uh, and it was on the Hairy Bikers. They they stopped there to uh, to have a burger. And I've not seen it for ages. It used to be here every time I came up virtually, but apparently it only, it only comes at weekends now. And uh, just at the moment, they, uh, they've got a problem with the freezer. So uh, it's not here. Blow me neck. At this speed, apart from a little bit of tyre noise, it's almost silent. It, it, it virtually sounds like an electric car, which isn't a good thing, by the way. <laughs> I might have to drop it down a few gears, <laughs> give us some a proper soundtrack. If, in fact, yeah. Oh, listen, now I'm going to have to do that again. I'll have to do that again when I can see that the road's clear. <laughs> I should have put a microphone on the, on the bumper. Kicking myself now. You just wouldn't be able to resist buying it. Uh, going back to electric cars, if you're one of those, uh, I saw a headline in one of the automotive um, rags, <laughs> I, I'd have to say. The, the whole agenda these days for all the motoring press is to, seem to be to push electric cars. And the, uh, the headline was, used car sales down 18.8%. Sales of electric vehicles up 57.1%. And in all the years I've been selling cars, and especially the last, since electric stars, electric stars, electric cars have, have started being built, we've only ever been asked to source one electric car. We've only ever sold one fully electric car. All the rest, diesels, we, we sell, no problem. Petrols, no problem but anyway and of course because it's an automotive rag the headline it immediately makes you think especially when the job's going a little bit quiet oh, electric cars going up 57 percent oh no wonder i'm quiet i better get some electric cars in or oh, that that's how it would, would make new sales managers people new into the job people who, who haven't got the experience that john and myself have so I went on Autotrader, I looked on Autotrader, and out of the 410,000 cars that are for sale on Autotrader, 
5,000 of them are electric, only 5,000. The reason that the sales of electric cars are going up at the moment is they're not going to privates as such, they're going to companies. And the reason companies are buying them is they're being bribed. And, and it's a taxation bribe because you can get, I, I think, 130% corporation tax uh, write down in the first year. So the car effectively costs you nothing. That's why, but if they had a choice, they'd buy diesel because they know it's going to be, well, I, I think they know it's going to be better. No, oh, come on, come this way, there's a, there's a turn here. See, Audi driver, both of us reversing. So long as I don't go over this cliff now, I should be all right. Yeah, so, and the other surprising thing is, on Auto Trader, there are actually nearly twice as many write-offs for sale on Auto Trader as there are electric cars. So your 57% increase means nothing. And, and these, are the re these are the things that are reported in the press. You can't believe a word they say. You know, that they are reporting on stuff which could change people's futures and could change the, the business model of some garage if they don't read down the rest of it. And the editor has actually responded, because I replied to them on Twitter saying, like, what a load of garbage that is. Um, and uh, he's responded to me saying, thanks, you, you've proved it. Further down, it says such and such a thing, that it's up to 1%, the market share. But that's not the headline. The headline is not that electric cars achieve 1% of sales. The headline is sales are up by 57%. And that's only because there is, a, in my opinion, it's only because the government are bribing people to buy electric cars with, with the tax write-offs. And I know from past experience, once everybody's got electric cars, they will put road tax on them. There's nothing so sure as them putting road tax on them. They, they did the same when I was younger. They, they reduced road tax if you had a 1.8 engine, not a two litre. All the manufacturers started making 1.8 engines. And as soon as they did that, they put the tax back up on them. That's the government for you. And, it, and it's not a party political broadcast. This, this is about the motor trade. And it's about people lying in the motor trade about, the, about the, their agendas, about, you know, if somebody's going to be advertising their electric cars in your magazine, then I suppose you want to be advertising, you want to be helping them. It, it's just that sort of thing. Back to this, it's petrol, it's beautiful, it drives great, it sounds great, it gives you a thrill when you're driving it. It's, it's an absolute joy to drive, unlike electric cars, which do absolutely nothing to me. Uh, or do nothing for me. I just think they're a yawn a mile. Uh, and cars like this are more smiles for your miles. <laughs> Thanks for watching and listening to that bit of a rant. I'll see you in the next video. Ta-da.